Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 27th of June. Now, we know that things are improving at the moment in the United Kingdom and the United States, but we know that there's a big threat from the Delta variant in Europe that we looked at a few days ago. And to be quite honest, I'm really concerned about the Delta variant in Africa and Asia. Now, let me illustrate this. Today, we'll be looking at Asia particularly. Uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and we've got a, a report from Thailand as well. Um, all countries that did really quite well in the first year of the pandemic. Now, here's the here's the uh, the graphic at the moment. Now, these are new daily confirmed cases per million. So here we see the United Kingdom quite high, Thailand, India, um, very good reduction in India there. Bangladesh creeping up, Pakistan lowish but starting to creep up a little bit now now first sight this doesn't look too bad these numbers actually look relatively low but then if we actually compare them to the um testing rates so that's that they're the cases per million and here we have the the testing rates here and i think this sort of uh jumps out at us straight away doesn't it that the united kingdom's doing so much more testing so that means there's a lot of undiagnosed cases in these countries. So starting at the bottom for the worst testing, Bangladesh, then Pakistan, then Thailand, uh, that, that's the, that, then Thailand there, then India, and then the United Kingdom. So we can see that we're not getting an accurate picture. So we know that the cases in these Asian countries are underrepresented. And it actually gets more concerning when we look at the uh, the vaccination situation. So cumulative vaccinations per 100 people. These are vaccine doses given. So the UK, um, well over 100 now vaccines per 100 people given. India, well, it's going up, but remarkably slowly. It's going to take a long time in India. Now, Thailand has picked up a bit. Bangladesh and Pakistan um, still pretty low. So when we can combine these factors together with the onslaught of the Delta variant, we've got a bit of a, of, a, of a concern. And these vaccination levels that we see in countries like uh, Bangladesh, uh, Pakistan, and uh, to some extent in Thailand, these vaccination numbers are not going to be enough to suppress the spread of the Delta variant, especially as these countries have got relatively low levels of innate immunity because they've done so well for the first parts of the pandemic. So there are some real quite serious signs here that we could be in in India in uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan for example for a rerun of the India situation let's just look at this in a little more detail now uh, so Bangladesh remember the populations here are huge 163 million people Delta variant spreading from India at the moment it does seem to be coming over land from India so the border areas are worse that the border areas of Bangladesh are mostly affected um, and from Monday, no one allowed to leave home for seven days unless it's an emergency. Now, this is all over the country. And this is just a massive step because so many people in Bangladesh are so poor that they really depend on that day's food for that day's income. And th there's no question this is going to be a massive burden on many, many people in Bangladesh. And people will go hungry as a result of this. This is really quite a, a draconian measure uh, that the government is taking. So as from Monday, no one allowed to leave home for seven days from Monday, tomorrow. Uh, as a result of this, crowds are leaving Dhaka because in the city you can only eat. Dhaka, the capital, of course, in the city you can only eat if you've got money and a lot of these people haven't. So uh, 15th of May, uh, there was another 261 cases, 22 deaths. Friday, uh, that's Friday, that's the 25th cases up to 5869 with 108 deaths so we see a sharp increase and already many hospitals in the border area and in Dakar are already overwhelmed and the cases are getting worse so you can see why the government needs to take this action but it's going to be very difficult for a lot of the poorer people it, this really is quite a, a nasty situation developing in Bangladesh um, now, the rail and bus services are already suspended, so people are actually walking out of the cities or those that can afford it are hiring a private motorist to drive them out of the cities. So this means a lot of people, the poor people that are walking out of the cities, it's basically if the villages are a long way away, 
they're not going to make it home for Monday. And, and what's going to happen then is not is not clear. Um, police and border guards are going to enforce the lockdown and this is going to be enforced. All offices, government and private, are closing from Monday as well. Um, army may be used to enforce as well as as well as the uh, the, the, the border um, authorities. So this is going to be enforced and it is going to be difficult in Bangladesh. Health department spokesman. Uh, it's a dangerous and alarming situation, direct quotes. If we don't contain it now, we'll face an India-like situation. Now, this, of course, is really quite terrifying. The healthcare provision in Bangladesh is, is, is probably even more limited than it is in India. In India, we saw people um, dying through lack of hospital care and it could well be the same in Bangladesh. So let's just hope that this draconian lockdown is going to be effective. Let's just hope it's going to be effective. But remember, the vaccination rates are still low. So it's really hard to see how this is going to do more than be a delaying strategy. Pakistan, likewise, also pretty concerning. Population again, huge population, 230 million uh, cases at the moment are actually going down, 660 cases, 25 deaths. But the Delta threat, now there's not a lot of genomic sequencing going on here, but given that the Delta threat is now in the border areas of Bangladesh, it will be in the border areas of Pakistan as well. And the, they're very aware of this, of course, in Pakistan. Sinopharm vaccine's been given out now, AstraZeneca vaccine, also some AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, the programme is ongoing for all over 18s in Pakistan. 2,000 vaccination centres, online registration system. Now, this does concern me a bit. Um, well, quite a lot, really. I mean, a lot of poorer people now do have access to the internet, but many don't. So it's an online registration system. And then people are informed to go for vaccine by text. And of course, not everyone has uh, text facilities. Um, so bit concerned that this could miss out some of the poorer people. Now, we've said the population in Pakistan is 230 million. Uh, so far, 13 million people have had the first dose. So it's like 5% of the population. And we know only too well that one dose of the vaccine is not protecting adequately against the Delta variant, something like 33% protection against symptomatic infection. The two doses are needed. And in Pakistan, not many people have had that, as in Bangladesh. So the country is very, very vulnerable to the Delta variant. Now, PAKVAC uh, is being made in uh, in Pakistan under Chinese license. Not quite sure where. Islamabad, probably. But uh, it, they are working on it, but that's still being ramped up. It's not in large scale production uh, as of yet. The Pakistani authorities are hoping to vaccinate 70 million people in 2021. Uh, this is perhaps optimistic. Dr. Ifran, public health physician, she says this. Western countries have purchased huge supplies already and placed advanced orders impacting supplies for the least developed countries. Which we, we, we do know about and um, the, 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 this is a problem. Advanced bookings have meant there's less available and uh, we've looked at other problems which have limited COVAX supplies as well. The majority of people have not taken the virus seriously unless they themselves or the family got infected. So, again, in Pakistan, poor uh, public compliance, really, with the strategies so far, which is going to be a problem over the next few weeks. We should engage community le leaders to make people more aware, of course. And my understanding is this is happening now uh, in, in Pakistan, but still... We have the Delta variant, we have low vaccination numbers, as in Bangladesh, and we have a poorly prepared public. It's, it's not a good combination. Now, we're going to look at Thailand in a minute. The vaccination numbers there are better, not brilliant, but the public is largely well prepared. The, pu the, 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 the public is largely well informed. So I am really quite concerned for Pakistan and Bangladesh, and especially in Pakistan. There does seem to be some vaccine hesitancy issues in Pakistan, as well as the low supply. Now, at the moment, it seems in Pakistan that the demand is outstripping supply. But there's still well-known problems with vaccination in Pakistan, actually. Pakistan is one of the very few countries with po wild polio left. 
Um, now, um, there is a lot of conspiracy theories in Pakistan that polio vaccines are used by Western governments to cause mass sterilization. Of course, it's complete and utter tosh. But tragically, this misinformation has resulted in people, healthcare workers working on polio eradication campaigns actually being killed in Pakistan by uh, extremists and um that is a concern as well. So we've got the Delta variant, we've got some suspicious to superstitious disinformation, and we've got poor public preparedness. So unfortunately in Bangladesh and Pakistan, we could be seeing India type situations in the next weeks to months. We really need to get mass vaccination into those areas very little immunity there population still with immune systems that are very naive to the virus now uh, thailand uh, population in thailand i was surprised i checked it out i was thinking the population was about 60 million it's now 70 million essentially 69.7 million so um i've actually got a video report from thailand so i think we'll watch that now if we have the technology. Lee, um, good afternoon to you. Good morning to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, we interviewed you about a year ago. In fact, it's more than a year ago now. Those yeah. are long memories and might remember. Yes. And you are in the beautiful uh, country of Thailand. What temperature is it there now? Uh, well, I'm outside. There's a light breeze. It's probably about 30 degrees celsius at the moment okay and, and quite humid in thailand from what i remember yeah, yeah. it's been worse but yeah, yeah, it's quite yeah. Humid at the moment yeah yeah. Uh, yeah am i detecting an aussie accent lee uh yeah i i was born in england but i spent uh my primary school and high school years onwards in australia mm -hmm. so, what, what, what are you doing in thailand uh, at the moment, I'm teaching here. Uh, I came here in 2001, and since then I've taught all levels. Uh, at the moment, I'm teaching high school level, uh, which is now online only due to the pandemic. So I've been doing a lot of videos and uh, live classes online via the internet okay. and for the past like... two months. Yeah, sorry? For the past two or three months, I think. Right, yeah, you've got more online, yeah. So yeah. would you like to welcome our Thai viewers in a quick sentence of Thai for us, Lee? Sawaddi kap, pom chu, Lee. Wani pom cha kui gap satanagan COVID-19. Gap kun ma, Dr. Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> I got the Sawaddi kap bit, right? <laughs> okay. yeah. I yeah. hope so, I said so, that. Yeah, yeah. So, so last year in Thailand, Lee, the, the COVID situation when we talked was actually pretty well controlled and we had lots of pictures from Thailand of very well organised, regulated people. Mask wearing is part of the culture in Thailand already, isn't it? Yes. Which is, yeah. of course, it's good. Schools were well organised, well regulated and I've sort of dipped in and out of Thailand over the past year or so, but cases have been pretty low, I think, until recently. Is that until about right? Recently, yeah, uh, it was all going quite well uh, up until about uh, February March this year when there were a few cases in a nightclub and other areas in, in Bangkok then shortly after that there is a holiday that's called Songkran holiday where a lot of people that live and work in Bangkok but are from other provinces mm. go back and visit family uh, since that time, since a lot of people left Bangkok and went back to visit their families, the spread has become a lot worse. Yeah. So it's like this focus in Bangkok. And of course, we've seen this so many times in different countries. We saw this in China originally, didn't we, with the New Year Festival with yeah. people going going around the country. And sadly, we're seeing it today, actually, in Bangladesh as people are trying to leave the cities. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so unfortunately, it looks like infection has, has, has sort of seeded Yes. around all of thailand at the moment yeah since since that time the numbers have gone up quite significantly yeah so and of course even over the past year that the restrictions in thailand have had huge economic impacts from the lack of tourism yeah they have uh, are, are you uh, aware of that yeah i'm aware of that um 
I, you can see the impacts uh, even around me. There, I mean, in the local shopping centres, shops are closing, uh, hotels are closing. Uh, places like Phuket, which is a very mm. famous tourist destination, that's been closed for the year. They're talking about opening up. Uh, they are opening up, I think, on July the first. But you have there are stipulations for coming. Fully vaccinated. Um, you you need to have a doctor's certificate saying you have don't haven't had uh, saying you've had your vaccine and certain things like that. So mm. yeah, so 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 quite a big impact. I mean, it must be devastating for a lot of individuals and and for the economy as a whole. It's uh... it certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so um so the increasing COVID cases, Lee. Do we know anything about the uh, the, the variants, the numbers of cases? Uh, the variants, uh, from what I've been reading in southern Thailand at the moment, they've got alpha and beta variant. Okay. And uh, within the last couple of weeks, uh, they're starting to talk more and more about uh, the delta variant, which yeah. seems to have arrived. So there doesn't seem, seem any real doubt that the delta variant has arrived in no, Thailand? No, it seems, if, yeah. I think at the moment they're talking hundreds of cases. Mm, but uh, uh, obviously that will go up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is, is there much testing being done in Thailand to, to give an accurate picture of this? Uh, well, I can tell you the numbers today. Yeah. Uh, the new infections today are 3,995. Deaths are 42. Uh, so far in Thailand, 244,000 and a half people have died. Uh, and they've had about 1,900 deaths and about 198,000 have recovered. Mm, mm. How many deaths did you say, Lee? About 1,900 official deaths? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's concerning. So, so we're talking about 4,000 new cases per day uh, being diagnosed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crept up to that. It, that's now that, that's probably the most we've had mm, mm -hmm. 4,000 and how, it, how are the, how, sorry sorry go ahead sorry i was just going to say it was hovering around one or two thousand